Welcome to the Warrior of Honor channel. The Ukrainian army continues to repel the attacks of Russian troops along the entire front line. A particularly hot spot today is the Bakhmut area, which is the most desirable target for the Russian army. Let's discuss the situation in this direction. After several months of unsuccessful attempts to attack Bakhmut head-on, the Russian military leadership decided to encircle the city. First, the Russian army captured Solodar, which was Bakhmut's main support. The supply of Ukrainian troops from the north passed through the Solodar, and it was a powerful stronghold. Also, the capture of Solodar opened fire control over the Bakhmut Slaviansk Highway, which is the main supply artery of Bakhmut. In recent days, the Russian army has continued to attack in two directions, trying to capture the village of Blagodatnoy and capturing the village of Kleshchevka. All this contributes to the operational encirclement of the Bakhmut group of Ukraine. We have already seen this in the Luhansk region on the example of Severodonetsk and Lysikansk, where the Ukrainian army held back the enemy's onslaught and then successfully retreated. After such containment of Russian troops, the Ukrainian army weakened the offensive potential of Russia, which helped it to carry out counteroffensives in the Kharkiv and Kherson regions. In general, Ukraine is still successfully holding back attempts to capture the city, regularly counterattacking and inflicting huge losses on the Russian side. As we indicated earlier, the main force in the Bakhmut direction is the Wagner PMC, which every day stormed the fortified positions of the Ukrainian troops. According to sources, the Russian military is sent to the assault without proper equipment. The Wagner PMC itself is regularly replenished with contract soldiers and convicts, whom the company's management recruits in prisons, and then ruthlessly uses in the assault. Earlier, we said that this point is not strategically important not for Ukrainian, not for the Russian side. The desire to capture Bakhmut comes from the political ambitions of the Russian authorities. Separately, it is worth noting the Lugansk direction, namely the direction of Kremenaya, where the Ukrainian army is developing a slow offensive success. In this direction, for the most part, the Katerov army are active. After the Russian offensive failed, Putin had to involve all available troops in the war in Ukraine, including Katerov army. Katerov really did not want Chechnya to take part in a bloody conflict. In one of the last clashes between the Ukrainian and Russian armies near Kremenaya, an elite Katerov battalion was destroyed, which was a strong blow to Chechnya and the current Chechen dictator. Today, Katerov's people are gendarmes in the Luhansk region and take part in the administration of the occupied territories. Thousands of Chechen foot soldiers poured into Ukraine during the very first days of the war, which began on 24 February 2022. Estimates of their number vary, but there are thought to be around 9,000 Chechens on the Russian side, with more than 21,000 having cycled through the conflict. Soldiers from Muslim-majority regions in Russia, like Dagestan, have than those from Moscow. While the exact number of Chechen war dead is unknown, much like the wider casualty figures on both sides of the conflict, Chambers says they have sustained heavy losses. Still, Chechen fighters serve other important roles in the war, often doing Moscow's dirty work. Chechens have reportedly been used to enforce discipline on disgruntled Russian soldiers, even executing deserters and those who try to defect to the Ukrainian side. Deploying brutal and battle-hardened Chechens in Ukraine also was an attempt at psychological warfare, trying to strike fear into the Ukrainian population. They were unleashed on Kiev during the early days of the war as Russia pushed to seize the capital and decapitate Ukraine. Ramzan Kadyrov reacted to the new demand of the Russian command to shave off the beards of soldiers. Putin's henchmen began to talk about religion. In particular, Putin's head of Chechnya claims that the participation of his militants in the war in Ukraine allegedly takes place on clearly expressed religious grounds. By doing this, he tries to strengthen his reputation and the reputation of his own power base. As for the beard, Kadyrov believes that its ban allegedly demoralizes his fighters. Although he has previously spoken about religious reasons for the participation of his militants in the war in Ukraine. However, this time he went further and on January 20 published a video with a group of Chechen theologians, completing their studies at the Russian University for Special Purposes in Grozny. Ramzan Kadyrov noted that allegedly more than 300 Kadis, judges who apply Sharia law, and Imams are planning to undergo similar training and go to Ukraine. American analysts at the Institute for the Study of War suggest that the presence of Cadis in Ukraine 
may indicate Kadyrov's intention that Chechen forces perform the main function of control in the occupied territories. A large number of the Russian military complained that Kadyrov's troops were not on the front line, but holed up in the rear. The Ukrainian authorities have repeatedly announced a conflict between the regular Russian army and the Kadyrovites at the front. According to some reports, some skirmishes even reached mutual skirmishes and massacres. The leader of the Chechen militants, Ramzan Kadyrov, seeks to increase his influence in the temporarily occupied territories of Ukraine. With his actions, he increases the tension in the Kremlin. The day before, the leader of the Chechen mercenaries said that more than 300 Kadis, judges who apply Sharia law, and imams plan to be trained and go to Ukraine. In fact, their presence in the Chechen groups in Ukraine may indicate that Kadyrov intends so that the Chechen forces perform the main function of management in the occupied territories. Kadyrov's manual courts are needed for two tasks. The first is to prevent desertion in the ranks of the occupying troops, and the second is to legalize looting, which the Kadyrovites are actively engaged in. Earlier, the CS has already told how Kadyrov is increasing his influence in the Donbass. Its Chechen fighters are actively looting in the Luhansk and Donetsk regions. And in Donetsk, there is always a delegation from Chechnya, which monitors the work of the occupation administration in favor of Kadyrov. According to numerous reports from captured Russians, Chechen fighters perform the role of barrage detachments in the occupying army. They prevent desertion and catch fugitives from the battlefield. In early January, one of the invaders blew himself up with a grenade in the Zaporozhye region. This happened because of the threats of Kadyrovites who demanded money. Around the same time, one of the mobilized Russian hanged himself in the territory of the temporarily occupied Lugansk region. The reason was raped by Kadyrov people. In the occupied territories, the Chechens consider themselves masters. Earlier in the occupied Simferopol, Kadyrov's nephew Kassin Abrajimov, who was appointed watchman in the Kherson and Zaporozhye regions, was detained. Together with him, four security officials from Chechnya were detained. Chechens brutally beat a man who stood up for his girlfriend. Kadyrovsky denied everything, but the incident was recorded by CCTV cameras. Since the invasion of Ukraine, there have been repeated reports of conflicts between Russian troops from Chechnya and fighters from other units. According to various sources, clashes occur on domestic and ethnic grounds. They didn't share the food, then the property. Then someone insulted someone, calling them a catch, a chalk or a pig, explains the source of the Kafka's editorial office. The realities of the relationship between the Kadyrovits and other military personnel of the Russian Federation. At the end of September, a complaint was published online on behalf of the wives and mothers of the soldiers of the so-called People's Militia of the self-proclaimed DPR. The letter, whose authenticity has not been confirmed, claims that the fighters mobilized by the separatists are subjected to bullying and humiliation by the military of the Russian army from the Chechen Republic. In the Kherson region, where there are many natives of Chechnya at the front, disputes flare up most often, as Michael Podoliak, advisor to the head of the presidential office of Ukraine, said on Twitter without presenting evidence. According to him, the Kadyrovits appropriate the loot in the occupied territories, participate in looting and division of other people's property. At the end of April, the Ukrainian side announced a conflict involving the Kadyrovites in the village of Kisilevka, Kherson region. There a shootout allegedly took place between Buryat and Chechen mercenaries. This information has not been confirmed by independent sources. Chechens don't go to the front lines at all, remaining in the rear exclusively as protected detachments. Their task is to encourage the occupying units to take active actions, that is, open fire on those who are trying to retreat the intelligence service of the Ukrainian Defense Ministry said. Another source of information about the actions of the Kadyrovites in Ukraine is the stories of non-Chechen fighters who got to the war through the training center in Gudrums. For example, the diary of the Chelyabinsk mercenary Alexander Volozhanin, nicknamed Yakuza, tells in detail about several episodes of looting in the homes of civilians. Russian paratrooper Pavel Filatyev, who took part in the capture of the Kherson region and then condemned the invasion of Ukraine, said that he had never seen the Kadyrovites on the front line. According to Filatyev, none of the soldiers and officers at the front had phones, and the military from the Chechen units constantly shot videos for social networks. Oleg Orlov, a human rights activist for the liquidated Memorial Center in Russia, explains the conflicts between the Kadyrovites and other military personnel of the Russian army precisely by the unequal distribution of equipment. 
Behind them, detachments from Chechnya, is Katarov. They are better armed, better supplied than other structures and units of the armed forces of Russia and separatists. There is a terrible mutual jealousy, dislike, turning into hatred between the structures, the interlocutor believes. He points out that not all is well among the Katarovites either. There is a difference between those contract servicemen who are not Chechens and ended up in the Akmat regiment after completing a two-week course in Gudrums and regular Katarovites. Of course, there are contradictions between them. The second consider themselves white bone, and the first rabble. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to keep abreast of the latest events in Ukraine.